come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a movie review podcast, a social experiment, if you will, where we watch a movie that's chosen round robin every week, and then we talk about it for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. Uh, you can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or hey, follow us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. We'd love to hear what you think about uh, this show or any past episodes or upcoming episodes. Talk to us about the future, what you'd like us to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We'd love to hear from you. Yep. Who are these people who'd love to hear from you? <laughs> Holly, Michaela, Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Sean. What did we watch tonight? Cat People Part 2. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> no, we watched Stephen King's Sleepwalkers. Oh, I like the fact that you put that in the full title. Full title. <laughs> Stephen I'm not, King's. I'm not going to lie. I was like, yeah, that's what we watched. <laughs> I totally yeah. blanked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cat People. <laughs> Cat People 2. <too. laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, what year was uh, Sleepwalkers made? 1992. And who made it? Written by Stephen King. Mick Garris's first Stephen King adaptation. Why is that significant? Because he did a shitload of them. Mm-hmm. He's got like a little cottage industry going Basically. on with like Stephen King stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, Mick Garris, he was a guy who started out as uh, he ran like a it was like called Channel Z in uh, Los Angeles. Was that where he started or he started off as a publicist for Universal Pictures doing publicity for the thing and like all yeah, the well, like, that's what early I remember. 80s he used to movies. Do stuff because I remember he's because he's always doing interviews with um well with filmmakers and everything. I see him doing a lot of interviews with John Carpenter and everything. He started mm-hmm. off doing behind Joe the Dante and, and the yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then he I think he hosted a talk show on something Channel Z and he talked to all these like horror filmmakers mm-hmm. and so he got into that circle. He's a lifelong horror fan. He currently hosts a podcast called Postmortem with Mick Garris. Um so he was a writer, I guess, right? First, well, we're saying second, that's where he graduated into to films. Mm-hmm. Was Critters Two his first Critters movie? Critters Two I think so. Was the first movie, yeah, first yeah, maybe written and directed by. Yes, go back and see our Critters Two podcast. That's right. <laughs> and he also he worked for Steven Spielberg. I think he was maybe the showrunner on Amazing Stories. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he wrote Batteries Not Included, which was an Amblin movie, if I remember. Mm-hmm. But somewhere along the line, he hooked up well with, with this movie, I suppose. Hooked up with Stephen King, and then did the Stand miniseries, mm-hmm. The, the Shining. Shining, Riding the Bullet, Riding the Bullet. Mm-hmm. Was Desperation the Stephen King movie? Yeah, was that Mick Garris? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so he just keeps on, keeps on keeping going. on. Yeah, all right. So this was a movie that Stephen King... It's not based on a Stephen King novel. An unpublished Bing. story. Yeah, unpublished story. <laughs> probably. Which, there's probably a reason <laughs> right it was they unpublished. They wouldn't publish it? <laughs> what? <laughs> I remember at the time this movie came out, 1992, here's a little trivia for you. There was another movie that came out around the same time called Stephen King's The Lawnmower Man. Yep. Mm-hmm. Do you remember this? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Jeff Stephen Hayden. King was so pissed because this was the first movie I think that he wrote for the screen and The Lawnmower Man's popularity overshadowed it. But The Lawnmower Man's like a really short story. It accounts for about a two minute scene in that movie. If you remember, it's all about like uh, cyberspace. And it was originally mm-hmm. called Cyber God, I think. And they just put the name of the Stephen King story on it. So he sued New Line Cinema three times <laughs> to get wow. his name taken off of that movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Just like how Maximum Overdrive was like a 10 page short story that. Ended up being a full length movie. Yeah. But at least that was his, you know? Yeah. He's, he's like, I don't want my name on Lawnmower Man. I want it on Sleepwalker. <laughs> on Sleepwalker. The incestuous cat movie. Yep. <laughs> Put my name on that shit. I, mean, I want to be in it. <laughs> don't degrade cats like that. They're not incestuous cats, they're incestuous cat people. So, is there something? Do cats like. Okay, well, should we talk about maybe. Yeah. We should probably set this up. I mean, yeah. We're introduced to uh, our. our how do we how do we start in on this movie? Are we just with Mark with Hamill, the, Luke with, yeah, Mark Hamill. Hamill. <laughs> with one of many cameos in this movie. Yeah, We're wonderful. How? Why? I don't even know the story of how he got to this or why he would do it. But you know, hey, the God 90, bless Mark Hamill for that was probably a low point in his career. Yeah. You know, yeah, this, the this early nineties, Joker. Yeah, right? yeah pre voiceover. Yeah, 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 yeah. probably. <laughs> 
When, when was the Giver? Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's shit. the same it's character. Around the, yeah, yeah, it's around yeah. the same character. time. It's like, well, right. I did this character for five minutes in this movie, mm-hmm. but I can expand on him for the entire like movie. Camel, yeah. yeah. Oh the mustache is pretty out of control. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. But it's, we end up in, it's its own character, almost. Basically. Bodega Bay, California. California? California. Yeah, the setting of... Alfred birds. Hitchcock's The Birds, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead, it's the cats. <laughs> because we arrive at a beachfront locale that has cats strung yeah. up all over the place. That's where the similarity in those two movies ends. <laughs> <laughs> Our police investigate, find, uh, like, the ultimate horror movie cliche we get in this movie. The, maybe the only one where it makes sense. Okay. You would say, open the door and a cat jumps out and scares everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. that's, I mean. The terror. It actually the makes shock. Sense. Yeah, it makes sense in this movie. That makes sense. <laughs> the fact that the body then f- jumps out <laughs> and screams, that As does not do. make sense <laughs> yeah. to me. In horror movies. I want to think the room was hermetically sealed, and that was all the air escaping <laughs> as they opened it. And it made a scream. Right. It was just like <laughs> the pressure of being let out. It was just like, ah! Mm-hmm. Right out. It's a desiccated corpse. But the corpse has uh, braces, so yeah. we, we draw the conclusion that this is a little what well, we're told. We're doing, it's yeah. a little girl. I mean, the little girl was like practically mummified and the cat was alive, so mm-hmm. I, just, I have questions. That's all. Well, well, we have a lot well, of questions. You know what? You can have questions. doesn't mean we'll answer them, so you're welcome to your it's questions. True. What are you talking about? I was totally intrigued. I'm like, who is this mummified person? Why are there all these cats? I can't wait to find out. So that's answer. how you open a movie. <laughs> I'm interested. I'm like, what's going no, on? No, no, no. You open the movie with these wonderful, uh, like during the credit sequence, uh, sketch drawings that some. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Best title sequence we've seen in a very uh, long time. That, that, oh, that came, how I miss Grandma Mittens. <laughs> that came after Mark Hamill. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, this is so, the title sequence. This like, is the all right, scene we're gonna setter. get him with Mark Hamill. You're, you're hit with then. a lot right off the bat with this movie. There's a lot to take in very quickly. Mm-hmm. This movie. I belly laughed. Through yeah. that opening sequence, because they're like these, a like breastfeeding cat. There's a breastfeeding cat, yeah. Cat woman, cat yes. woman, yeah. That is meant to look like an ancient, like wood block carving. And yeah. It looked Basically. like a coloring book. Yeah, it really <laughs> did. Uh huh. And then the fading portrait, the family of, like, portrait. grandma cat. Yeah, straight into grandma cat. Like Victorian yeah. era portraits yeah. of a cat. And lots oh, of God. Egyptian, because we're told at the very beginning of this movie uh, through uh, like an excerpt from the uh, the Chillicote uh, ancient uh, you know, encyclopedia of Arcania, yeah, 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 uh, <laughs> that sleepwalkers yeah. are not just uh, people it, who wander it's, around at night. It's not a sleep disorder. Mm, nope, <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope, nope. No, completely different disorder. Yeah. Somehow, it's a shape shifting cat person Mm -hmm. who is the they think that the legend of this is the inspiration of the vampire myth Mm -hmm. this is some amazing shit it also like if you miss this title card like the whole movie is kind of fucked for you because they drop so much important (laughs) information in that they also say that like they're like the only thing that can kill them is cat scratches Uh in that title card it's a lot of info and yeah it's and if you miss it yeah Yeah. (laughs) what the (laughs) fuck what's going on it's like (laughs) <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Well, the movie introduces us in short order to Charles Brady and his mother. Mm. Uh, this is Brian Krause, Krause from Krause. Return Krause. to the Blue Lagoon. Yes. What else is he from? Yeah. He's from... You graduate to anything else? Charmed. From Charmed. Of course okay. you would know that. <laughs> Leo the White Lighter in Charmed. Of course. All right. Which really I did not here? remember until I was watching it tonight going, oh! Oh yeah! <laughs> this movie, this movie has WB written My all over it. Yeah, it, oh, it does. Is he <laughs> related? It. Is he related to Peter Krause, right. the actor? Uh, I, don't I don't know. We should have probably looked this up. Which yeah. is another connection to WB because he's married to Lauren Graham in real life. Right? Do they look so, similar? Kind of. Yeah, a little bit. I think the Peter Krause has darker brothers? hair, but wow, could yeah. be brothers. Yeah, WB is incestuous. Yeah, much like this movie. Uh, yes, <laughs> because he has an incestuous relationship with his mother. It's Alice uh, Krieg uh-huh. from. Uh, she's you probably know her as the Borg Queen. Yes. From Star Trek: First Contact, mm-hmm. or possibly Ghost Story, mm-hmm. or possibly. Thor, The Dark World. Mm-hmm. I don't remember her in Thor, The Dark World. It was when Natalie Portman's on like the slab, and she's like, is that a quantum field generator? She's like, it's a soul forge. She's the one that says it's a soul forge. Oh, mm-hmm. well, there, yeah. There she's also in the OA, if anyone watched that show. Mm-hmm. 
She's a fetching yep. South African actress, mm-hmm. yep. which accounts for the accent. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, there you go. There yep. it is. It's Alice Cregan. That's all I got. And uh, so anyway, yeah, they have an incestuous relationship, uh, which uh, Holly found extremely disturbing. So evening. off-putting. <laughs> it is upsetting. You just get in from It's like, very upsetting. Why? No. What is this? Because I didn't, I didn't realize that it was his mom. He's up in his room, which, can we talk about the opening scene where we meet him? <laughs> oh, yeah. And he's looking at his yearbook. Oh, my God. Yeah, see, so much happened in the yeah. beginning, I can't remember it all. <laughs> but Kayla, wow. tell us about that. Because um, that was... <laughs> <laughs> what's his name? Brian Krause, is that we said, mm-hmm. right? So he's... um. Wait, what's his name in this movie? Charles Brown. Charles, Charles um, thank you, yeah. He's sitting in his room listening to that song that gets played three more times oh, in this yeah. movie. Sleepwalk. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Yeah. On right, a little yeah. seven-inch record, they listen to it like... At least four times in this movie. Yeah. They had um, to leave their last home real quick, so that's the only one they grab. I think the Enya mu- music, which of course you think, you know, mm-hmm. Stephen King, Sleepwalkers, Enya, right? Yes. Uh, also plays at least three times mm-hmm. in this film. It works for me. Yep. So, I, I didn't remember that that was the song and that it was from this movie. And watching tonight, I'm like, so many things came rushing yeah. back to me. <laughs> so I was watching this. Bodacious. I felt instantly depressed. Bodacious. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. So Charles is sitting in his room listening to that record, shirt off, but pleated pants and belt still on. Um, um, looking at his yearbook very longingly <laughs> with a box, box of tissues suspiciously <laughs> close to him. Yeah. <laughs> and he's looking at like a girl's picture that he's drawn like hearts around or whatever. Yeah. And literally. On his, on his arm with a knife. Literally yeah. resting his cheek upon his hand. Yeah. Just daydreaming. Out the yeah. Wistful. Wistful thinking. <laughs> yep. Tanya. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tanya. Played for, by the just uh, uh, beautiful ma- mansion. Amic? Mansion? Mm-hmm. Mansion. Amic. Mansion. Yes. Amic. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's all right. I uh, watch. I understand. I was blinded by yeah. yeah. I, she is. I've always had a crush on her. I get since it. I was like sixteen years old. Sherry from Gilmore Girls. Yeah, for those of you. Yep. Mm-hmm. She's watch on, Gilmore Girls now. She's on yep. Riverdale now. Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. Yeah. Yep. She's one of the moms on Riverdale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which she is graduated to mom. End. I like the fact that she's still she's the mom on Gilmore Girls yeah. too. Yeah. That's what's mm-hmm. kind of awesome yes. about to follow a career. WBCW, like, the world turns. Uh-huh. Yep, the world yeah. turns. There it is. The, the, our, like the world's economy is built on the CW and WB. Yeah. So. <laughs> Basically, yeah, yes, yeah, a good, poor, good, yeah. healthy portion. Of it is, yes. So, what are we supposed to think about Charles and his mom? I mean, aside from worrying on the fact we know that they're the sleepwalkers, I suppose right off the bat, mm-hmm. right? Are they the hero, the protagonists of our film? No. Is that how nah. it's setting them up? No. no. Okay. No, because yeah. he comes downstairs and they're all like weird. <laughs> they're feeling up on each other. <laughs> Explain weird. Like, okay, I did not realize that was his mom. You didn't. That I was didn't. the fun part of watching this with you because you haven't seen this before. No, yes, I was, you got so, to... because they don't just say, "Hey, morning, mom." It's just because yeah. they well, because the pic they briefly show that picture and it's just like a girl with long dark hair. He goes and says, "There's a girl with long dark hair," and I was like, "Oh, is that her?" Like that's mm-hmm. weird that you'd be like fawning over a picture when she's downstairs. <laughs> that I would be weird because I, I kind of I kind of thought that like that was his high school sweetheart mm. and that they were like married now. <laughs> Because he does carve a T into his arm. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh. That's permanent shit right there, right? Yeah. Well, we don't know with these people, but. I was like, oh, they're married now. That's cute. That's, it. That's weird. <laughs> wow. And, yeah. So Your then, world was shattered. Oh, nice. Because <laughs> wow. then they got all like, close and they were dancing. I'm like, this feels odd. This feels odd. And she said something about, like, Do you, don't you love your mother? And I lost my fucking shit. Lost my shit. <laughs> it's yeah. so funny because for, for she before she delivered that information, you were like, the relationship's weird and I don't like it or something yes. like that. <laughs> and I was this like, oh, just wrong. wait. I was like, this just is wait. an odd couple. I don't yeah. like this. Well, because it delivered, I think, a double whammy to poor Holly over there because I think that in that scene, uh, the mom is looking out the window as these cats are prowling oh, around. Oh, God. And mm. then we see a bear trap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And brains uh, mm-hmm. sitting on that. Yeah, know. yeah. The cat's fine though. Yeah, yeah that that's... one is. That one's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The like hundreds of dead cats hanging from the tree in the beginning. That's. So mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I forgot mm-hmm. about that. Yeah. Yep. So they have a aversion. They went to, in the end. to cats. Mm-hmm. Um, but so... cats seem to know what they are and seek them out. Like yeah. the cats seem to be like, get this fuckery out of here. It's yeah. like it's like in Ghost how the cats can see the ghosts. And are yep. wise to it. It's yep. the same. Maybe you know what? I have a theory. That's how this movie came about. Someone watched Ghost and was like, "What if we did the cat's perspective, <laughs> like yeah, as a movie?" Nineteen ninety. That Stephen King had cats. No, okay. <laughs> I feel that the cats don't care that they're cat people. They really don't like the ancestors. Were like. That's what it is. <laughs> 
Because they're like, that's what I feel. Yeah, it's like you're misrepresenting our kind. Is that what yeah? yeah, probably. Yeah, they're just like it's finally your cat people. We're okay with that. Mm-hmm. But that and they're like, oh, that's no. how. It, like, mm-hmm. That's how it is. I'm gonna sit in your fucking lawn and watch yeah. you because you you're a piece of that? shit. Is that what you think of us? Yep. Yeah. Watching you, you motherfuckers. Yep. It is generally Literally over the course. That's, that's, that's like the, the deputy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Watching you motherfuckers. <laughs> He's literally a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn you. Yeah. Gross. Gross. Shit. Colin, they're, just, they're, Colin they, just got it. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah, cha-ching. he does. He picks up his mother and takes her upstairs. Ah! <laughs> it's very <laughs> romantic. Right we see what, like... Three sex scenes with them. There's that inferred one. There's an actual one. Too many. Well, well they, and then you get the gross reversal of the in the mirror oh, yeah. of the actual one of them in their slimy Ugh. cat Ugly form. Slug, slimy. Like Why naked. are they so They're slimy? Cats. <laughs> like cats are not inherently yeah. slimy. Why are they slimy? A hairless and cat hairless. is not slimy like no. that. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the makeup effects in this movie are baffling. Baffling. <laughs> there's Be- something yeah. because they have. There's at least there, well, it's one of you know. There's the, the, the real the makeup stages. Mm-hmm. I guess I somebody <laughs> made that shit. That's true. They sculpted it. Was that a good idea? Was the whole movie a good idea? I mean, this is the- <laughs> <laughs> this is the question we're here to answer. <laughs> right. yeah. <laughs> they go and at least there's like two stages to the the cat transformation thing, right? They have the uh, the prosthetic. Hey, we're gonna you know put this kind of buffy makeup on you mm-hmm. to it make is. you look a bit cat-ish. Yeah, which is just I don't know. Does it does it work? No, like, no it's comical. No. It's supposed to be frightening as hell, right? When yeah. Charles suddenly turns into this thing and menaces Tanya. It's just, I I had I had three different comparisons during this movie. One of them was the vampire makeup in Buffy, very obvious. The second one was the the beast from the show Beauty and the Beast, uh-huh. yes. which is hilarious yes. considering who very shows true. up later yes. in this movie. And Ron true. Perlman, wow, it all comes yes. together. Ron Perlman's in a movie with cat people, but he's not yes. dressed as a cat person. <laughs> he's not. How did that the most happen? Like person in this movie. Uh-huh. The third comparison was the um, from the, Gr- the How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Who people. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's yeah. kind of very rubbery, yep. smooth face, yeah. and you're like. This is so. This is what you're basing your whole horror movie on, right here. This That's is it. what you're going with. And then, just when he is trying to emote through the thing, I don't know if it's just how he's delivering his lines or whatever, but it's like this is just the, the visual and the voice don't match up. You know? Yeah. It, they also seem to go through a personality change when they transform, and they just wisecrack jokes constantly. Yes. But only yes. when they're in cat form. It's like he's in heat, but with comedy. Seriously, because <laughs> at the very beginning, it's true. At the very beginning, he's all about this chick, you know, his heart, like putting a harder on a picture in the yearbook and like fawning over her. And then all of a sudden, he like turns into a cat person and he's all like, ah, I'm going to fuck you up. Like, it's just really weird. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's weird. so it's stupid. Weird. It's so, well, it doesn't make any sense. The first half of the movie seems to be trying to treat, well, I mean, it's it's trying to treat it as somewhat of a serious horror movie, right? I mean, Is it? Not, it starts off that first, way. The yeah. first half. Because you're supposed to be thinking, okay, you know, and this is why I guess the first time I saw it, I was saying, are these our protagonists? Is Charles our protagonist? Because even though he's in this well, relationship with his mother, yeah. it seems like you know he's going to fall in love with Tanya. That's going to create the the rift between him and his mother, mm-hmm. and it's going to be him and Tanya escaping the clutches of evil mom. Yeah, like that's the yeah, that's the true. dynamic that's set up at the sure. beginning yes, of the movie. Very true. And I think this is probably like you know Stephen King's like, well, how do we? If that's your expectation, how do we? You know, reach in there and twist it all around for the second half of the film. But they do it, and it is like, as you guys were saying, it's the weirdest fucking thing because so his weird. personality just completely changes at the drop of a hat. But that feels most like Stephen King just going, Yeah, this is where I'm going to go this direction. But those complete opposite. Both of those actors' comedic timing was absolutely terrible. Like, they were both so. absolutely terrible. I mean, granted, the jokes were not that great they had to deliver, yeah, but yeah. Sure. they, ugh, like, Charles especially was really bad and just kept going. Like yeah. you thought it was going to stop and it just kept going. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of some of his one liners right I can't, now. But I'm only thinking of you. It made me cringe a little <laughs> bit. Like it made, oh, yeah, it the shame transfer death, yeah. was ridiculous. I felt embarrassed for him watching this. <laughs> I felt oh, embarrassed for a lot was, of people. One yeah. was um, when he killed the cop and he called him a cop kebab. Oh. Cop kebab. Oh, yeah. He stabs yeah. him in the ear. He's like, cop kebab. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what, what? movie is this? Mm-hmm. The fuck are you? We weren't doing this 30 minutes ago. What's mm-hmm. going on? 
Yeah. But they went straight into it. That was also, that was the other thing we were, you know, during the movie. I mean, we were howling with laughter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I haven't laughed this hard awesome. in a long time. Yeah. Good shit in <laughs> oh, this movie. Great. Uh, but we were also, I was like, what fucking year is this? Because they, they listened to, uh, you know, Sleepwalk. Ma- uh, Mansion Amick, when we first meet her, she's listening to Twist and Shout because she's a, a movie theater ticket mm-hmm. girl. Yeah, if Mr. Sandman popped up, I wouldn't have been surprised. Right, There's a, no a kidding. Kid being led out of a classroom by his ear in high school. Yeah. Uh, you know, that hallway a- scene in the high school looks like it was like a scrapped footage from Greece. Like it straight up looked yeah. like like this could have been from Greece. Like yeah. it looks like right out. Yeah, exactly. And like and all the cars are from the 50s in this yeah. movie. But, yeah. yeah, and it looks like but well, it, it looks like Trans Am, right? California yeah. high school that you're just like. Yeah, it seems those. It always seems well, like a different because, era. From part back of it then. because that that high school's been in a lot of things. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> kind of got that. Yeah. All the properties in this movie have been yeah. in a bunch yeah. of things. Yeah. <laughs> this is a backlot movie. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. I like backlot movies. Mm-hmm. Well, we're also introduced to our third, third, fourth major character, Clovis. Clovis. Okay. Clovis. The cat in one of the this best scenes I think I have ever seen in a movie ever. <laughs> I quoted it on last week's show. Mm-hmm. At the close, because we're we we are in. Well, his owner is a deputy mm-hmm. cop, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he's playing with because of course this guy <laughs> takes say the star. <laughs> he I takes mean, his cat yeah. out with him on patrol. If I was a cop, the attack. Yeah. He's an attack. He cat. literally attack. has you a know, collar that says attack. Cat. Based on how this cat behaves, I believe he uh, he's like a police property cat. You know, yeah, like, he's he, like he's like a canine yeah. unit. Yeah. He's a cat yeah. unit. Yeah, yeah. the K cat unit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's on the back of the car. That'd be great. Can we cool. have those? <laughs> <laughs> I'll sign up. I'll be a cop yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, now we know why you chose this movie. You cat person, Sean. Does it not make sense? <laughs> Sean is the cat person. Um. Yeah, but I mean, Clovis is like his. Like I, again, watching it again tonight, I'm like, holy shit! Like he really is like the fourth lead in this movie. Mm-hmm. Basically, his stunt double, not so much, but Clovis. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> when you talk about the little puppet, <laughs> yeah, the puppet that stared sitting, out the right. window. No cat has ever stared out a window that long and not moved. <laughs> Do you like how they had a real cat for the chase scene in the car? But when the car is parked and sitting still, this is when we use the prop cat yeah, that doesn't that, move. Yeah, the cat's got to stay there and not hop out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's a, there's literally a police chasing with a cat in the passenger seat. Oh yeah, like yeah. it's the best buddy cop matchup yeah. ever. And then, yeah. the, and then the middle of the chase, they they cut to that shot, and Clovis looks straight into the camera. Yeah, it's amazing. He does. He's real close. <laughs> it's amazing. Not only yeah. I'm just glad they got that shot because yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just focus on the deputy and everything. But they they went down and got yeah. like, the fucking cat in the shot with them. I'm like, yes. Not only it's does he shot. look straight in the camera, but he's like three inches away from the camera yeah. when he looks straight yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. He's right there. And he seriously looks like, what the fuck is going yeah. on? <laughs> hey, I don't know if you know, I'm a cat. I don't do this. <laughs> well, there was a... Uh, well, I guess, yeah, we'll have to talk a little bit more about Clovis uh, as, 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 as we, we get through this. I mean, yeah. but, um, but there was a scene... Um, not too far into the movie. I mean, so we've established that, you know, that they're, they're cat people. Uh, they glow purple when they have sex. They Apparently, yeah. are looking for a virgin to steal the, is it soul? Essence. An essence. But they glowed when they were having sex? Well, the remember how the window? After, during the oh, scene, that's right. I was like, that's when I went to get another beer. Because so. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you were yeah. like, oh, 10 minutes oh, in, I yeah. can't even handle this. <laughs> I was like, I need more beer. This yep. is hard. <laughs> yeah. There was the there window. No, yeah, I saw the point, window. We yeah. were only getting the incest. There were no redeeming qualities, yeah. I don't think, yet. Yeah. <laughs> redeeming. That's a stretch. Redeeming qualities. We'll call it that. Well, I was kind of like, I mean, at this point, still, I, mean, I remember my initial, you know, going through this movie. I was still kind of with it until. Uh, what what happened first that um, he was pulled over? Charles was pulled over by the, oh, the, teacher. the teacher. Yeah, fucking hell, that bullshit. Well, what happened there's before the, the, the well? There's the classroom the, scene where he tells a story in front of the teacher and everything. Kind of about that sleepwalking. About sleepwalking. Yeah. Sleepwalkers. What a great yeah. way to keep your cover, man. Uh-huh. Just tell everybody Seriously. all about your weird animal kind. That, who's gonna believe that? I mean, isn't that isn't that the yeah? Best but that draws attention to yourself being that, weird. Isn't that the best right, disguise? When the cat person does eventually show up, you're like, hey. <laughs> He told the story. Yeah, but that's the best disguise hiding out in the yeah. open. Right? Nobody will ever believe this. Cat people. But it's also giving away your weakness. Whatever. I mean, yeah. It's just yeah. saying, hey, I'm a weird kid, if nothing else, and that you don't want that attention at all. You no, just no, want to no, blend no, no, in. No, no. He's creative, and that's why the lead girl loves him, is because he's got <laughs> such an imagination. This works in his favor. Uh huh. 
Okay. Sure. Uh, okay. We saw the movie. Okay. That happened. That happened. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, saying, right. I'm yeah. just yeah. saying facts here. If that expires, I'm real quick, though. <laughs> I mean, that's his fault. Yeah. Uh, but the scene, I think, where I lost it. <laughs> figuratively. <laughs> Figur- really. Figuratively. Uh, was uh, when he was somehow able to evade. Because there's a, a police chase, right? With uh, Clovis. The teacher was before the police. That's right. That was. And he mm -hmm. kills that guy. And you're like, oh, he is the villain because he ripped this guy's arm off. And when that part happened, because I watched this when I was very young, Mm -hmm. that's the first like, oh, the morph. Well, that's the morph. But just the fact that he got his hand pulled off. Yeah. That Mm -hmm. fucked me up. I was young enough to be like, he lost his hand. Here's the thing, though. You're like, that's the part where I realized he was the villain. That's not the part where I realized he was the villain because there's this fucking teacher who's about to try to put his hand on his pants to try to blackmail him. Basically. Pull his fucking hand off. Yeah, I that's thought that's not that a too. villain to me. Yeah, when I saw where the teacher was reaching, I was yeah. like, oh. Yeah, it's like, oh, I don't remember that I was part. like, no, no, yeah. no, no. You pull that hand off and throw it away. Like, mm-hmm. fuck that. <laughs> But it's the gore, the brutality of it or something, and the yep. glibness of like, yeah, I always thought that people should keep their hands themselves. Here's yours. <laughs> That's okay. when the bad jokes start. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. Right there. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And the morph also starts because this is 1992, and so we're infatuated with the idea of, uh, you, need, you need a moment? Sean's okay. ill. Yeah. Sean's yeah. ill. Please, please bear with us. <laughs> Through Sorry. Sean's illness, um, but the uh, the the infatuation that we had with er- early CGI, which yeah. I think it existed only in the fucking morph, you know, which we don't do anymore, really, right? We don't, do we not morph things? No, because it's awful, right? Well, when we just don't always now, see it. Like, we yeah. Nowadays, we don't need to see it happen all the time. We can see the before and see the after. We don't always need to see the transformation, which is yeah. fine. It's fine. Yeah. Well, you used to have all the prosthetics that would push out and mm-hmm. deform a face, and you'd have to but cut away. But this is like a stop times. motion morph. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's like, that, but like we say morph, but their faces don't change that much. Like it's not that much of a change compared to like I don't know any other kind of morph in a well, movie. Well, just in you know? that one scene where he sees the cat for the first time and like goes to like five different yeah, stages of yeah. cat because he's freaking out. Cause mm-hmm. he's fucking yeah. Cat oh, bro. oh. <laughs> that was weird because at some point he like turned into a child. Yeah. Yeah. That was weird. Well, I don't remember that one. Where yeah. He's like, uh, like a weird. baby. That was odd. That was weird. That was I also weird. love it in movies where like a character, because of course the cop has to go to his superiors mm-hmm. and tell him, you know, this is what I saw. Yeah. But they haven't seen the finished visual effect yet. So they're trying to describe something as it's written. And it's like, mm-hmm. wow, he had no face. It was just a blur. And then you're like, but I saw it. I mean, I could describe it better than that if, you know, if I was there. Like, it looked like the guy's face shifted around and became a, you know, it morphed. (laughs) Meanwhile, you're like, he was a fucking cat. (laughs) (laughs) Well, to be fair, they do have like a glamoring ability about them because he can make his whole fucking car turn invisible. That's the next point. (laughs) Yeah. You know, where does that come from? Apparently, these people just have a wealth of powers that, you know, yeah. They just feel like they can use at their leisure, but. Well, they can dim. That's what they call it, because you have to have your name for your, you know, weirdo right. ability. Which I'm okay with. The dimming. I like, I like the dimming. Not the shining. I well, like the dimming. Then, the dimming. And, then, and then later on, when they check her film, um, they get the pictures developed, and his face was more blurred, like they described. That's mm-hmm. very true. Mm-hmm. It was caught so, mid-morph. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. If not mid-morph, it's just like it was catch- trying to capture his true essence through film. <laughs> Which they show up that in... That sounded a bit and more just a blob. highfalutin than I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> his true essence. His true essence is a blob. You mean how, you like, how she captured the essence of the rocks? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I like rocks. Oh, God. Her... Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, there's some great, like, unintentionally funny one-liners in this movie, like Sean just mentioned. He literally says to her, to win her over, I like rocks. I like rocks. Yeah. Like yeah. rocks. really shitty photography. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Like a, and that, like that when he... Cha- in the rocks. I like beautiful. rocks. Oh, that scene works dramatically. <laughs> Doesn't it? She's embarrassed. She's got her uh, her Anything underwear is, out and uh, like trying to distract around. him. I really like that picture. What is, I like rocks, you know. <laughs> Plus, a, there was the whole time he chastised his mom about swearing because that's that's where they draw the line. That's the worst yeah. thing they do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Swearing and then the whole I do rubbings back and forth innuendo between <laughs> mm-hmm. Charlie and Tanya's yeah. mom was real gross. Uh-huh. Yeah. Me and Ferris Bueller's parents. Yeah, Ferris Bueller's parents yeah. are in this movie. Both of them. Yeah. Playing her parents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which yep. is weird. 
weird, but you know, I guess you do that kind of thing. Well, they were married. Did they, they were married in real life? So yeah. they come in a set. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. All right. They got divorced the year this movie came out, though. Oh, same. Because of they were in this movie. Because Pro- of this movie. I, probably. <laughs> it's fair. It's probably fair to say because shit keeps happening to their movie children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I can't handle this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they have those giant, like eighteen by twenty-four, like full-size gravestone rubbings just framed and hanging in their house, and that's what kicks off the whole like I do rubbings conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he's been doing them, old Charles has, because he's actually like hundreds of years or thousands of years old, as far as we know, right? He's nomadic cat cat folks. They are nomadic. Um, he's really. But I want to get supposed back. to be super old. I'm oh, guessing yeah. so. Why does he look like a teenager? Well, well, sure they, they, don't age. they don't age or pass. They, they age, age past a certain age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. Because that's why there was some scenes where I was like, okay, I kind of feel this that like he's confident with the cop. You know, that he can, you know, cops try to pull him over. He's always confident in every situation that he's in because he's done it hundreds yeah. and hundreds of times. So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, I kind of see what you're going for here. But then there were times that it was like, but mom, I have to, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm like, hmm. You know, you yeah. sound like a teenager. All right. But I want to get back to this, this, oh, yeah. this the, the, the dimming. <clears throat> because... <clears throat> Somehow by making his car disappear. That I mean, that is a trick right there in itself. Yeah. But then he's able to actually transform his car from a Trans Am to a Mustang. Like a bright red Mustang. Mm-hmm. This is like some kind of amazing shit, right? Mm-hmm. How the fuck? Like, in the, the, the mythology that you're setting up for these characters, you don't see this coming. It seems like it's, you know just out of the fucking blue like in this scene all of a sudden this you know it's like i get your shape-shifting cat people but that you can also shape-shift your car i mean it's just general shape-shifting i guess you can't shape-shift in front of a mirror though uh, something about because mirrors. in mirrors they show I the think true they're, cat they're people. going they're trying to riff on the vampire thing a little bit in that regard mm-hmm. that they they're can't reaching, see them they're reaching for some mythology there. they're making their own mythology yeah. as they write the movie yeah. is what it seems I mean, like maybe. making it up as they make this movie they being you Stephen King <laughs> yeah oh yes so, oh yes you put your name be like let's do some right fucking mirrors okay so today <laughs> um, mom and Sundergram is sex scene in yeah. front of a mirror where we see their slimy cat bodies yeah, alright he was like doing and coke off a mirror. Yeah. Like, mirrors. 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 Yes. That's it. Mirrors. And his cats are just like on top of his keyboard. Yeah. yeah. He's like, God yeah. damn, these yeah. The cats wrote this movie. Cats and mirrors. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, he was coked out of his head in his cameo appearance. It sure seemed that way anyway. He shows Maybe. up in the movie briefly. There's along a whole bunch of cameos in that scene. Yeah. A galaxy. They, they go too fast, I think, to catch them mm-hmm. all. They go way too fast. Unless you to catch know, them all. especially if, if you don't yeah. know what you're Yeah, but some for of them look people. way different. Like Clive Barker just looks nothing like that anymore. Yeah. 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 But you can just, you're just like, oh, Clive Barker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That mm-hmm. one I barely caught. Yeah. Yeah. Toby Hooper, I think, and Stephen King are the most obvious ones. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. John Landis scene, is in there at some point, too. And Does Joe Dante. Does he even have a line, jo- John Landis? He's mm-hmm. in the. No, he doesn't. Oh, I didn't think so. Dante does because mm-hmm. they, oh, they're talking about the, getting the pictures back there. The, when they're, they're looking at the pictures, yeah, is that Joe Dante? That's mm-hmm. John Landis on one side and mm-hmm. John. John Landis has one line. Oh, he does. Mm-hmm. He does, and then Joe Dante does okay. have a couple mm-hmm. lines. Well, John mm-hmm. Landis has one thing. Yeah, while he's mm-hmm. chewing on something, mm, he okay. says one thing. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what it is, but he's got one thing. Well, all right mm-hmm. then. We know from watching these guys why they never acted in other movies, aside from Dark Man. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right, that was even, the John but even then, one? he didn't have any lines. Yeah, now, I don't think. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So um, there's uh, oh Joe Dante, the Burbs. Yeah, yeah there you yeah, go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Which is that lot is in this yeah. movie a whole bunch too. Yeah, a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, what were we saying? The Walton's house is in the, the Walton's movie. house. The Gilmore Girls' house. All we of break Stars Hollow. Yeah. Gone. All of Stars <laughs> Hollow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of Stars Hollow from Gilmore Girls is in this movie. Oh, I fucking love that oh, movie. Oh, I love that movie so much. <laughs> oh, Burbs is the best. Can we just talk about the Burbs for half hour? Oh, please. See, we did, actually. Day, you can yeah, go back and a, check out our like Burbs episode. episode. like three, four? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty I know. Ago. I'm sad that you guys did that. <laughs> we can erase that one and just do it again. Can we? <laughs> Revisit it. We should. Revisit the Burbs. <laughs> Bet we can have a better podcast. Oh, I love uh, the Burbs so much. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, okay, so at this point in the movie, uh, uh, Charles gets Tanya alone right well he brings her over to the house to meet mom yes and since their goal is well, she this is where you have questions she, I, just, also have she questions. Just I have a lot over. of questions she just stopped she over because he was supposed to pick her up okay right but this and is the thing 
that yeah. they want they need to feed on virtue and so their plan is and we've seen this from the opening scene uh mom gives her a rose in her hair this marks their victim uh so in this scene she uh, tanya comes into the house uh, with the two people who want to kill her and uh they don't kill her they don't kill her <laughs> they just why, let her go right. yeah yeah. Well, and it's, they also never established why the mom can't leave the house and feed herself. Yeah. Right, because this Bitch, is the major plot yourself. point. Major. Yeah. She li- like she will not leave the house. She's got like we talked about. She's got a very Miss mm-hmm. Havisham until vibe going she on. Leaves the house. Yeah. Until she leaves the house <laughs> in the third act. Yeah. <laughs> but for yeah, but otherwise she just sits around in her nightgown waiting yeah. for her son to feed her. Yeah. With all these dangerously huge candles lit everywhere. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. I think in the dialogue, it's always established. It makes it seem like she's weaker than him. Like, he's the stronger one. That's why he goes out yeah. procures the, or uses his charm to bring back the victim. Doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with her, though. Exactly. <laughs> when it actually, you know, time comes, it's like she's the stronger one of the two. You know, like, yeah. the older, mm-hmm. you know, stronger uh, yeah. vampire. Maybe she can control herself as far as, like, form. Like, if she goes she, out and she's going to feed, she's going to change or something. I'm just, she I'm is here. able to use the dimming? Yeah, she controlled... Like crazy. She controlled him. Mm-hmm. She dimmed I, them I both know. together? Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, can't, uh, I can't talk yeah. to that. And in, in the yeah. feline world, isn't it common for the female to be the hunter? Mm-hmm. In the lion world, yeah. That's the lion yeah. world. No, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's feline, but it's the lion world. Yeah, the women are the hunter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why it just kind of seems... It seems weird when it turns out yeah. that she's... Perfectly capable of taking care of herself. Maybe she can't go out and do anything because she'll do that. Yeah, she'll do what she does. She can't just be. She's not subtle about anything. Whereas he can be charming to his victims and draw them where he needs to. Where she doesn't have that ability. Maybe. But then, how did they get by until he was an adult? Then she can't find any male virgins. Apparently, he's been an adult for hundreds of years. Yeah, but like he. There may have been more people around at that point to help them feed. Because they do talk about, she's like, I swear we're not our last of our kind because he thinks they are. Yes. So Mm -hmm. that's true. That still doesn't explain why they didn't just kill her when she was in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. There's no explanation. There's no explanation. It's like a sex patrol. I don't know. I don't know. know. It's like, oh, we weren't prepared for you today, so we don't have the plastic to put down on the. (sighs) But uh, also, like, I don't know if they're thinking about it. But like her family knows where she's going and everything. Oh, and that true. They don't, don't seem if, smart enough well, to think about they, that. But I don't know if they're thinking about no, that at they're that gonna, point. They're going to pull up stakes and leave town as soon as they've done the deed. Very anyway. true. Yeah. And and um, he told he told her mom where they were going to go when they had their date. Mm-hmm. So he's planning to kill her there, yeah. and then they're going to leave town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It makes no fucking sense, man. All right, Stephen King, we're going to put this on you. To, you can yeah, write Stephen to us King. at uh, yeah. yeah, Let us know Yahoo. what your uh, methods and <laughs> your motivations behind this uh, <laughs> unwritten story were and why it was unwritten. Yeah, Stephen yeah. King, yeah. our number one listener. <laughs> <laughs> and, through, <laughs> Stephen King. Oh my God. and throughout this movie, there are just more and more cats gathering outside their house. Like just they just they like the birds, they periodically just keep gathering oh, outside yeah. the house. At yeah. some point, they're on the roof. There is, and they're just very chill, just sitting in the yard, yeah. staring what at the house. What are they waiting for? They can't get in the house, Colin. They're, is it Why like not? vampires have to be invited in? No, no, I don't think they just they can't find a way. So like just, just cats on the roof. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They do be invited in. Yeah. But yeah, I they're on the roof. They can go down the chimney. Yeah. They don't know that. We see Clovis punch out a window. Like, Clovis, literally oh with his cat fist. Clovis is the most badass punch cat out in the history of cinema. Yeah. <laughs> he should be the star like, of our documentary. The cat oh, yeah. doesn't give a f- all these cats for the documentary. Yeah, but Clovis especially is Clovis like, doesn't give a yeah. fuck. No. <laughs> He's Clovis jumping. Like oh, he has a job, to, he has a job to do. That was the best. But, and then he, he like fucking assembles them. Like, yeah. yeah. He they tells follow the him. Cop, Let's go. This way, the cop shows up and he's like, Clovis. Clovis. He's like, Meow. <laughs> he's yeah. like Meow. there he goes. Yeah. Up the tree. There should be the that fucking fake window. Cat that comes up as he points to where he needs oh to go. Oh my God, Meow. that'd be great. Yeah. There's already like a legitimate clouder outside the house, and then he assembles more and brings them like from the police station. Because as he's running, like people, like cats are joining him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a cat army, full on yeah, cat army. It's a cat yeah. army. Yeah. Because if they get around cats, they will be attacked. Which leads to my favorite thing ever: is people getting attacked by monsters where they have to grab them <laughs> and, shake them and shake them around. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. I love it when it happens because you just get that moment where they stop shaking for a little bit and you see how fake. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh yeah. It flashbacks to Monkey Shines oh, with how much so the flopping was in this movie. There's a lot of it. it. Love it. 
It did seem like there was some weight to like the fake yeah. cats, though. Whereas like yeah. monkey shines, that shit was flying everywhere. Yeah. But like, there was a little bit of weight to it this time, yeah. so they yeah, at least weighted it down a little bit. They add a little bit of brutality where she's breaking a couple necks, right. and one of them is pretty icky. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the like that. best joke that I never remembered from this is that she gets and in cat form she's got a cat on her back and the sheriff busts in and he shoots her with a shotgun and that fucking cat goes flying <laughs> oh my god that's so good yeah that's just like let's put a little bit of comedy in here because the full guy bit. was like <laughs> oh, that fucking cat screaming yeah. in here yeah <laughs> No, I mean you so haven't good. lived until you've seen the the cat assemble scene because it doesn't even take <laughs> place at the house. It is like downtown in the streets. Yeah, yeah. they run through the city. No, yeah, Clovis is like in fucking, slow motion. Clovis yeah. is like Captain America. He's like fucking kitties assemble. Oh, yeah. Like they come out of nowhere, running through downtown Stars it's, Hollow. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. I realize though this is something Mick Garris likes to do because. I've watched Critters 2, and there's a scene where the Critters assemble and roll through the streets. Yeah. With shots oh. that yeah. look just like from this oh. movie. Oh, man. So he likes doing that. The assemble. <laughs> like, we're assembling. Let's go. He likes that shot. He likes that. I mean, we do all do. That. I mean, I like we it. Like I'm going to say, was it an effective shot? We were rolling with laughter it again. Yeah. With, I mean... <laughs> how is that not comedic? How can you make that's that not comedic? Like, yeah, it's... I don't know how you can be like, let's put cute little furry animals in this and uh, try not to laugh at. Yeah, and go. I'm yeah. more in awe of like how they made that happen. I know, like, because cats don't do shit. How they made the, well, not only that, even the simple things of like all the cats sitting in the yard and like the Trans Am comes flying up the driveway and none of them move. Mm -hmm. Like, how do they not get all those cats to just there scatter and stuff like that? Small fishing line tied around all of the legs <laughs> staked in the ground. <laughs> I would almost guarantee it to get. But cats you don't even see them pulling it. Yeah, okay. There's and something there's they some all sitting want. on the fence too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's something they all want. And there's some fake. It's cats a laser pointer. Around. Yeah, maybe they have it all pointed on the house. There's a laser pointer in the house. Yeah. No, it's amazing. These sleepwalkers have this fear of cats, but they have to drive through them every day to get home. Well, I mean, you know, they're, yeah. the, they're everywhere on the yeah. house, but that, you know, hey, they're okay with that. Cats have a, plenty of opportunity you think to attack. I think they're waiting for Clovis. I seriously think they're just yeah. waiting for they Clovis to show up. They're waiting for like, the orders. Because yeah. Clovis yeah. actually takes one down. Yeah. That's, he has the knowledge. And the right? confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the confidence, because yeah. he's the one who saves Tanya. That's right, there ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Clovis so, yeah. saves our heroine. So if you have a cat translator, they're literally like, hold, brothers. Yes. Hold. <laughs> Wait for Clovis. There's a cut scene where Clovis delivers the Independence Day yeah. <laughs> president speech <laughs> to the other cats. <laughs> Today, uh, we <laughs> celebrate <laughs> National Cat Month. Yeah. And he just runs in and fucking tears them to shit. <laughs> That's in there. That would be fantastic. I think his the deleted scenes. Oh yeah, yeah. Fucking, that fucking blowhorn comes up with yeah. the cat end. Aside from the <laughs> chase scene, I think his best moment of acting was when his cop partner died. And he oh, went, oh my god! He went over and laid on his chest. It was so sad. I literally cried. It was so sad. Oh, and blood. And, oh man, it was so sad. Yeah. The, that cat actor, Excellent like, case. I'm just amazed by Ruffo that cat actor. I really Sparks? Am. Yeah. Sparks. We're going to out him yeah. right here. His name is Sparks. Sparks. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Probably. Yeah. 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 This movie was yeah. made in 1992. Yeah, I so, yeah. yeah, very dead. Sad, he did break character a little bit once, but it was hilarious. <laughs> but it was <laughs> <laughs> when, when, he looked in the, us. when he when, looked at the camera? No, when when he was in the police station sitting on the desk and his partner went over to pet him and he swatted at him a little bit. He, like, batted his hand a little bit. I was like, I was like, that was the best take they got of that and oh. that's what because that's was, what made it yeah. it was so playful that yeah every other so take playful. was you ever seen that uh, shot of the cop who was playing with the orange cat and he's like they're just they're oh very pinky nice yeah and then the cat just fucking flips out and yeah. goes crazy <laughs> that was that cat and every other take of that and yeah like, this is the best one yep yeah. gotta use it yeah it was definitely that like batting at you like i don't want to be touched right now like yeah. that was what he was no, doing I it was playful I, it, it didn't batting. seem like that's how that scene was supposed to go down. Like that cat was supposed to sit still, and like I was going to pet him, but that cat was not having it. Yeah, Clovis saw him too, didn't you, Clovis? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Clovis is awesome. Mm -hmm. He's awesome. Uh, but it, that's the thing that like you established, or the movie establishes that the cat people can be shot, they can be scratched, they can be cut. And none of this does anything to them, but the mm. scratch of a cat makes That's their right. face, or, yeah, on the face, facial area, makes fa the skin. They, they, they start steaming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. apparently it's like a long, uh, slow acting uh, cat It's like toxin. a snake bite. 
Yeah, because she yeah. puts something. It's like the venom. mom is yeah. caring for her dying son. It's like Vaseline. With, yeah, which makes the, the venom salve. bubble out of the wounds. I guess. This movie is kind of gory. With it's all just of its, slimy and sticky. But it's brutal, too. Yeah, and the hand pulling off, and then... She slams that guy down on the picket fence. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah the guy got the hand that rocked the cradled. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's and death gets, by corn yeah. cobs. He gets his whole arm, Ron Perlman gets his whole arm, like, fucked up, and yeah. fingers bitten off. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're still in that age where you do, like, the graphic close-up of some kind of... Yeah, every violent act has a out. punctuation yeah. of yeah. a... Corn cob death scene. was... I mean, Bad. that kind of was just like, eh, all right. Her, I mean, I thought, I was like, this is awful. And then she delivered the joke that went with it. And I was like, and that made it worse. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Because no, she had, yeah, this is the mother. She had Her personality bad, changes yeah. too, yeah. Corn on the cob. Just right just in someone's back. Weapon. Right in just the back. Just let that, Corn just let on that the sink cop. in. <laughs> Corn <laughs> on the cob. Yeah. Yep. Corn on the cob. Yep. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. Oh, I'll, that's I'll, about, I'll leave. I'll yeah. leave. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just leave. <laughs> that's about the level the movie's playing at yeah. right there. So it's totally, totally in character. <laughs> so, but this I'm, is where, it, yeah, this is where it gets fucking. I'm, yeah, I was confused because fucking the son is like dead at this point. Like when she brings, uh, he has, uh, telekinesis powers. She brings the girl back to the house, and the girl, and he's like dead. Yeah, he's dead. But then she makes him get up. This whole part just he's, he's confused almost, me. Almost dead. He's almost. He's he almost was very dead. He wasn't dead. I it's guess not. He was dead. I thought he was dead. I thought he was, I thought dead, he was dead, too. dead too. So why was she so like? concerned about taking care of him if she could just bring him back from the dead anyways. Right. I don't know. Questions. Yeah, that's my question. Was she bringing him back from the dead or was she just moving his body? I got the feeling that she was reanimating his corpse to make him dance with the girl because she had lost her mind at but, that point. Right. I was going to well, say, what yeah, was the point that, of that at all? Yeah. 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 That just whole part to show just her craziness, me. which is just like, okay, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. But then, like, he does come back to life. Maybe he wasn't all the way dead. Kind of. as a zombie. Yeah, zombie cat He's still man. sucking the life out of her. Trying to. Was he? Oh, that's right, because he turns into his cat yeah, form. Yeah, turns into his full cat form. Which is the second, the second stage of this thing. Yeah. yeah. A really bad thing. sculpture. It looks like one of those creatures from the Giver. Kind of, it yeah. did, and that's why I thought of Power Rangers, because we talked about Power Rangers a lot on the yeah. Giver episode. Yeah, <laughs> it's a really, really bad rubber it, suit. Yeah. By the way, I think how this works is the sun feeds off the virgin... And then she has sex with the son, and that's how she gets. That's energy. how it's transferred. Is yeah. that it? I, that was going to be my next this. question. Yeah. Because, that's how I think that works. Because he was doing the whole soul sucking thing in the graveyard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's supposed to bring food for mom. I think that's mm-hmm. how it works for them. Yep. Well, that's right, because mom so, never actually does the. Nope. Whoop, she never does it. Blue soul no. ray. Ew. So I think that's how Herself. that works. Yep. So in effect, just, it was done much better in a movie called Life Force. So when she says she's. Mm-hmm. Very true. So when it's she true. says she's hungry, she just wants a spooge. But, like, that's Jesus. how she stays alive. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesus but I'm, I'm trying to make sense of this. This is so weird. Uh, wow. uh, the unspoken... Uh, <laughs> the unspoken has been spoken. <laughs> of sleepwalkers. It's so yeah. Stephen God, King. Stephen King's a fucking it's pervert. It's so gross. Where, where is your mind at? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> His electric blue spooge. Electric yeah, the, like, I was just going to say that. Like, electric like, booga splooge. <laughs> <laughs> That's the porn parody of it. <laughs> oh, fucking two. Electric booga splooge. <laughs> it's all over now. Oh, oh no. no. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Yeah. I didn't light up a whole room, apparently. No, oh my God. It glows uh, in the dark. Uh-huh. It's electric. Yeah. <laughs> Even in that scene where they are, uh, wait, I think it's not them. I think it is in the mirror shot when you see yeah. the two rubber things. Oh, God, that was, oh. The, oh, the bed is gross. glowing underneath them. It's uh, going yeah. purple. That oh, rubber butt was so gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rubber cat butt. Uh, slimy. Slimy, slimy rubber, rubber cat, cat butt. butt. No. And, like, uh, just the movement in the rubber suits. Oh, yeah, oh, it's God. awkward. Yeah. It's so Because it doesn't oh. bend right. It no, just, it doesn't. It doesn't bend at all. Actually, none it's of the rubber bends like, in this it's movie. It's like slamming together a Barbie and a Ken doll. Basically, yeah. <laughs> that is very slimy. I mean, wrinkly. Yeah. Oh, God. that's the thing. They have so many folds on them. I get. Yeah. Dude, they're all. Ra- they are like naked, like the naked cats. Yeah. yeah. So many folds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many folds. Oh, I love oh, your sexy oh, folds. God. Oh God, it's so oh. gross. Wow. So 
weirded out uh, by this movie. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay, so in the second half, we're saying this movie like loses its fucking mind. Is that what we're saying? It feels like it's it like does. two movies. I mean, it loses its in mind the, the second same half? time. The same time Charles loses his mind, I think this movie loses That's when its it, mind. Yeah, it breaks. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he just goes fucking nuts. Like he's, we, as in, like know. he's a different character. It's yeah, completely different character. It doesn't make any sense with anything yeah. you've seen beforehand. Yeah. It's no. tone shifts so much, yeah. so much. Yeah, it's not yeah, it the doesn't same make movie. Sense, the character break that he does. Yeah, I don't get it. Like unless he's just in heat. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, but they didn't. Ex- that's that. an inference they don't, they don't, on your part, right, you know. Yeah. That's me saying things. No, because like it's him. It, the character's supposed to be at that moment. We're supposed to say this is who he has been all along. He has always been this psychotic. You know, killer who's like, you know, hey, we're having fun now and throwing all these quips around. I don't know what they want as he's out attacking of that. Yeah. her. Yeah, and it's like the whole, so the whole the whole diversion of him seeming like a charming, you know, uh, like he cares. You know, it's like, does it have to be her mom? You know, yeah, that was all like, wh- why did he care that if yeah, this that is who he really window. was, like that doesn't matter at all. Yep. And it doesn't make any sense when you put those mm-hmm. two uh, character components together. But, no, because uh, then he gets uh, beat up by the cat and he just turns into a little pussy. Also, if he's new to the school, <laughs> a little pussy. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Zing. <laughs> no, point, point, Sean. I'll be here all week. <laughs> Try the veal, tip your waitress. Yeah. If he's new to the school, how does he? Have, how does he have a yearbook already? Oh my god! What? <laughs> <laughs> like what is? <laughs> that's our opening scene with him. Is him uh, like sure jerk, buy one. jerking off over that yearbook? The yearbooks are <laughs> the yearbooks are not done till like the last semester of the school year. People are gonna watch this movie and be like, "Where's the jerking off of the yearbook part?" I don't remember. They just said you have to look for the clues, yearbook. guys. That you shouldn't look be your clues. main reason for watching this movie. <laughs> well, I'm okay. To watch a Krause jerk off over a yearbook. Yeah, let's not. Let's not let that be your reason no, for watching this. Why isn't that on the poster? <laughs> so the, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it does end in an orgy of cat, uh, cat, cat proportions. What? Cat, cat. <laughs> poor, 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 <laughs> oh, that would have been awful. Yeah. Well, I was door expecting. Closing. Yeah, when the door closed and the cops were like, "What's that?" and it was going to pan down and you'd have the the footprints. That's what I was. Yeah, that's, I was, at least yeah, they didn't that's, do that. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah probably yeah. didn't have the money to pull it off. But no, uh, probably not. Yeah, that's why they just sneak up. Mm, behind this was everybody. a relatively expensive movie. I think it, probably it? it had a more. You want to guess? God damn it! it oh, do you know how effects. much it was? I know how much it was. Yeah, thirty million dollars. Fifteen million. Oh, that's about well, right. That feels, still, that feels about right for this. Ninety-two. Like, yeah, that's a lot of money in nineties yeah. dollars. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's a sizable movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but okay. So the maybe it's not an orgy, but the mm-hmm. all the cats rush on this the the villain cat yeah. cat, cat person, right? Yeah, the and mother. cling yeah. cling to the mother, cling to her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they're so attacking. we get the most. Uh, but Clovis has his moment too, where he gets in there. Oh no, maybe that was on Brian Krause. Was it on Brian Krause or the mother? No, it was on the mother. Right the at mother. the end, Clovis gets in there in close up, chomping away at her yes. face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. And they had to, sh- and they shot it all in close up because if you shot that scene in a wide, that would be the most ridiculous thing you ever saw in your life. Mm-hmm. Well, there I needed make, it. You can make I, a point that I a case it. that it might be uh, already the most ridiculous thing. I mean, it was because there are so <laughs> many cats on that woman <laughs> that she's just shaking around and so much cat foley in that. So much cat foley. So much cat foley. What I really enjoyed was the Alice uh, Krieg uh, ADR, <laughs> where she's howling and screaming. You know, because obviously it's somebody else in the the rubber right. suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But her, she's howling and screaming in the affected voice. Oh, I'm like, I felt so bad for these actors, mm-hmm. especially these actresses <laughs> who had to, you know, grapple with the rubber, rubber monsters. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then she explodes. They no, scratches, she sets on fire. They scratch the shit out of fire. She and can bust. And yeah. she, she can bust. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But is able to transform you my back son. into her. Yeah. She can turn back into herself yep. on, with digital fire. Did, on yep. Digital, digital fire. Yeah. Those bad digital. It player. almost felt like that, like that mirror shot um, from. Oh fuck! What do we watch? Where, where the shot was like she's on fire, but it's because of a mirror reflection 
Um, oh, what was that fucking movie? I'm with the, with the dolls, where... with, the, we're, we're, with the mannequins, where she's walking down the thing and the mannequins is vampires. Ah, fuck. I'll remember it later. <laughs> <sighs> There's an old Mario Baba movie that did that. I, I think, think it that's... was uh, Baron Blood, but we didn't watch no, that. No, we didn't watch yeah. that. Yeah, okay. never mind. <laughs> yeah. I got it's, you, though. They do yeah. it in a mirror. Yeah, it, feels, it felt like it, yeah. yeah. How I they know. got her in it, yeah. Oh, no, this is the fucking 90s, like cutting edge CGI technology. You can do stuff with computers now that you just couldn't imagine a year or two before this. I mean, that's very true. That's right. You can set a person on fire. You didn't have to do that before. Mm -hmm. Before you had to hold the little light bar or whatever in front of the camera with the flames on it. (laughs) Do the flame bar right in front of the camera. You're just like, ah! Uh Uh-huh. Now you can put the fire right on on their body. You're on fire! Go! Action! It's horrible! Oh, it's it's burning! It's horrible! It's a burning death! (laughs) Go! I like how when she was completely on fire and laid on top of the hood of the cop car nothing happened to the cop car but earlier in the movie when she shoots one bullet into two separate cop cars Ooh. they explode like into the aiming. sky oh yeah yep. mm-hmm. yeah I, yep. I live for shit, shit like this in movies <laughs> I live for it because you just don't see it enough I mean yeah that's that's special no, those are <laughs> fantastic <laughs> moments yeah because I think it's Ron Perlman's gun I yep. think it's yeah. a Terminator kind of scene where she comes out of the house dragging Magic yeah, yeah, yeah. by her hair. Ron Perlman's like, put the woman down. Yeah. And He's then she cop. just kind of breaks both of his arms and then uh, fires his revolver I at these like two cop cars and they explode magnificently. They do. Mm-hmm. I feel like they hired him just for that close up of his mouth ah, shot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Because he's got that fucking mouth. <laughs> like, we need a big mouth. He's got a big mouth. I think they Ron hired Perlman. him hoping he would be like, hey, you know, I've had some practice wearing like cat prosthetics, <laughs> right? And they'd be like, hey, <laughs> do you want to be in this? Like, I think they kind of were like, no one wants to hear your shit. And no, I think they Garris. wanted him that's to. How he associated him. Yeah. He's like You're making a movie about cats and putting him. Look at the design. You know who else wore this? Ron yeah. Perlman. Get him those, in the movie. Yeah, those people will appreciate. He it. read the, he read the script. He's like, I'll do it, but I'm not wearing a fucking cat thing ever again. Mm-hmm. Not well, his doing it. Movie fortunes. I don't think were very. You know, uh, good at that point. Not, not at that not point. Good. No, not back then. No, because no. I remember seeing him in that and going like, oh, that's the guy who was the Beast in Beauty mm-hmm. and the Beast. Yeah. that was what like. Yeah, wow. What year was that? It was, it was like in the seventies, wasn't no, it? Late seventies, like it was eighties, eighty six or something. So maybe yeah. it was. Well, that's still eighty six, ninety two. That's relatively. Yeah, because I remember recent. still seeing reruns of it when I was I really too. little. Yeah, when I was yeah. really little, that reruns would like happen all the time. Eighty nine ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's all... he was uh, Clan of the Cave Bear or something. What was the movie he did before? Quest that? for Fire. Quest for Fire. Yeah. That's what. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm more curious about Clan of the Cave Bear with Daryl <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> They used to make movies about cavemen. There were two of them: Apparently. Quest for Fire and Clan of the Cave Bear. Wow! Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Was one of them short they, lived. They Quest for Fire has like fire no English. Too. Yeah, <laughs> Quest for Fire is. Yeah. <laughs> Is um, yeah, there's no English in it. Much like the, well, what is that fucking Mel Gibson movie that has no English uh, in it either? Apocalypto. Apocalypto. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but Ron Perlman's also severely allergic to prosthetics too, so uh, he avoids them as much as possible. Unless except, he's Hellboy. When he's in which Hellboy. case, you well, really, and you're Hellboy. you know, when I read his autobiography and he's talking about in Hellboy, they had these new kind of prosthetics that were made to be hypoallergenic, but now those are illegal because apparently the process used to make them is really bad for the environment. Oh, uh, uh, well. We can is make that, it better for you, but is, bad for the Is that why he turned down Hellboy? He didn't. He wanted to do another one. They canceled know, the third one. Yeah. And then, uh, and then they're rebooting it. David Harbour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With a sexy Hellboy. <laughs> he was all down to do a third one, and they didn't want to want him back for a third one. So. I know. Mm-hmm. There's no justice in the, this world at all, no. mm-hmm. people, no matter what you've heard. Okay. I didn't watch this. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, so anyway, do we have any for final stray observations? Before, after I offended Colin uh, going uh, into the final stretch of this Because <laughs> we are going to review this movie. Just stick with us. We're oh, going yeah. to read we're some mail. But any, I'm, I, don't any know, final... I don't know where we're at on all of this. This is going to be a surprise. Uh, right? Yeah, I don't know where we're all at. We on. don't know who's going to like it and oh, who's going to hate it. I'm, I'm going with Sean's going to hate it. He's like, I brought it tonight because he doesn't own it, folks. This is how we know. He doesn't have a copy of it. We had to rent it on Amazon. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> you don't know, Kyle. Okay. He loves it. Sean does have, watch a lot of movies that he doesn't own. That's true. So. But likes them? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a long disbelief from Colin. And on we go. All right. Okay, so I suppose that means we should uh, get to your mail. We uh, nice. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Hold on a second. We're going to summon Igor, our mail demon. Igor. 
Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. That's all you got. He's got that cat face on. He needs to take that shit off. Does he? Does he? Does he he transform? Does he morph? He doesn't know how. Mm -hmm. (laughs) If he's learned how to do that, we should be worried. I I think he just stretches his face into different forms. He uses the tape, like the scotch (laughs) tape, like you know, you tape your nose up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lon Chaney, Lon Chaney style. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. piano wire and scotch tape. That's weird. Yeah. Uh well uh we should write, remind folks how they can get a hold of us they can get a hold of us on Facebook Facebook dot com slash Saturday Night Freak Show on Twitter at Sat Freak Show by email Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo dot com or on uh, Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about sleepwalkers Ooh. Mike Palm writes in and says uh, they had an interesting mythology started in this movie but they didn't do anything with it true. I think it's generous to say they even had a mythology because yeah. they kind of just made it up as they went along. Yeah. It seemed like so. But even that's a mythology. Made was it an interesting spot. mythology? And I think they it did all everything the they could with it. It just wasn't okay. Uh, yeah, I feel like it was kind of. I feel like it was kind of. I would like to know the history of these mythology. sleepwalkers. It's what's convenient for our plot. That's our mythology. I guess there so. You so go. We need them to be able to transform the car right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They can do that. Mm-hmm. It and was a little hodgepodge. They really are allergic to cats. Maybe that's where it started. Guy had an allergic to, allergic reaction. <laughs> There's a to cats. lot of things that could be just like he's allergic to cats. Yeah. He was watching. It's like, he was I doing a lot of hate coke. Those bastards. I can't stand it when they're around. So, Saw you know, two naked cats fucking. It was uh-huh. just like I can make a movie about that. That's Stephen King. Uh, <laughs> that is Stephen King. The Good Morning Nancy podcast writes in when we announced that we were going to be watching Sleepwalkers and says, "Oh hell yes, this movie is wild." Yeah, I mean, wild. yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. that is a word to describe it. Yes, <laughs> thank Literally, you for writing. Wild in. Cats in this movie. Yep. Uh, Crypticus writes in and says, "I saw Sleepwalkers on opening night in a packed house, and the audience went nuts. Folks were howling at the gore, clapping for the morphing effects, and screaming at the incestuous kiss. One of the biggest reactions I've ever seen in a theater. Yet somehow nobody remembers this film now. Wow. Huh? Wow. Yeah." Yeah. yeah, I actually I'm jealous. I would love to have a full theater experience of this that movie. That would be great. Yeah, I feel like it was just a lot of people doing what I did throughout this whole movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, uh. I think it was probably less funny then, but who knows? Yeah, uh, Jacob, I don't know. That seemed to have a pretty good time. Yep. Jacob Cotner writes in. And he says, I think this film is not very well made, but the weird relationship between the mother and the son kept me watching it over and over again. Ew. Also, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> also, the cat people makeup is just plain oh, freaky. And the use of that song with the slide guitar is unforgettable. That is Sleepwalk. I don't know who did it. Yeah. We're well. going to have to look this up. But there you go. You can. They don't want you to forget it because they play it four fucking times in this movie. So One more for the Enya song. That's just me. That's right. Uh, Zemer27 writes Zemer! in. Welcome back. And says, I remember watching this when I was six and thinking, even at that age, I don't think I'm supposed to be watching this, but it's so <laughs> yeah. bad. Yeah. I can't look away. Yeah. And you're all terrific, by the way. And happy Thanksgiving. Oh, thank oh, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, about Scream 4, we posted uh, uh, something on our aforementioned Facebooks and the Instagrams about the scene where uh, Anthony Anderson uh, gets the knife in his head mm-hmm. and bleeds and lives yes. for like four minutes after it. Yeah. Uh, Cherith Cute Story says mm-hmm. that scene is the worst scene for me in a movie filled with bad scenes. Yeah. It's pretty bad. It's not a, bad, it's not a good bad. scene. Pretty bad. It's not good. Mm-hmm. But the thing that we didn't know last week is that Wes Craven added that to the, the movie himself because apparently he read uh, a medical story about, like, so that actually happened. He was basing it on a true story. I know. But that's why it's that's unbelievable. So I was trying to tell Holly. <laughs> but, she didn't believe me. We're not doing this th- again. But no. then it should have been <laughs> someone less comedic. It, dun, dun, dun. it should doing have been. That? It sh- it should have been the yeah with the movie yeah like it should have been a more serious actor than if that's the case because and I don't think you can put a medical Marvel situation in a horror yeah, movie well, well but that's it. what a Nightmare on Elm Street was based on like uh, maybe but right just because it actually did happen doesn't mean enough people are gonna be like that's real yeah because yeah. you don't believe it no I mean yeah. if you base your movie on it that's one thing but to have one small mm-hmm. scene it right. doesn't work it would have been right. better if it would have if, if they would have flipped it adam brody and adrian or anthony anderson it might have been a little better but even still even still it wouldn't have been good regarding henry the whole movie's based around that that works <laughs> mm-hmm. ritz ritz yeah. ritz <laughs> 
That's a fucked up scene. It yes, is a it is. Up scene. That's f- yeah, I've, well, I've watched that, that recently. I watched that like a week ago. And that's uh, yeah. fucked up. Yeah. Oh. It yeah. is. He just keeps talking. Oh, yeah. Oh god, it's creepy. <laughs> it's creepy. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that brings us Ritz. to the moment that you've all been Colin! waiting for. <laughs> what did you think about tonight's movie entitled Stephen King Sleepwalkers? All right. Well, I'm going to lead into this with, uh, so I've seen this at least three times in my life. I saw it in the theater. Did the incestuous relationship keep bringing you back? <laughs> and, uh, no, apparently not. That, that uh, it was the the blinding uh, beauty of Madgen Amick. Ah, uh, uh, it is. Uh, it is brought blinding. Me back to That's that fair. Book. She's lovely. Did we start she the is just Amick fan club the appreciation I think, club? I think we've started it before because let's I keep continue on tonight. It, it seems like <laughs> we've started before and you've done nothing with it since then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only in our hearts. We've got oh, the yeah. Caroline Monroe fan club. We've got yes. uh, Jamie Gertz. The Jamie Gertz fan club. Yes, and we've the, started many. Mention Am- Amick. There's a rumor, and here, the so girl from uh, uh, Marissa Mel. I think we did from Danger Diabolique way okay. back in the day. Um, <laughs> Carolyn Monroe can... is the only one I remember. There you go. Well, let's add Mention Mention Amick. I think we should to that list. Um, so the first time I saw it, uh, the impression of it was that this was a substandard, very poor movie. It's like okay, so this is what Stephen King's given to us, you know? Because you go in expecting an actual horror movie. Second time around. It was like one of those, hey, it's been, you know, 20 odd years. I'm going to watch this movie again. And it was really bad. But apparently uh, the problem that I had with this movie was not watching it in the right environment. Yeah. Because this movie, like a fine wine, has evolved into possibly, I mean, it is it is a freak show movie. Like, yeah. you know, we've watched a lot of them on this show. We watched one last week. I mean, like, Devil's Reign was another one. It's like, you, the makers, when they made these movies, didn't think they were going to be howlingly bad. <laughs> right? But there's enough of it in there at a constant clip of just stuff that's, like, coming, being thrown at you that is so fucking out there and ridiculous uh, that you have to kind of admire that they pulled this together. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just, it's insane. It's a really, it's a really bad movie, but if you're of the, uh, they the, thought this is a movie we should yeah, make. Yeah, that's why it's fantastic. <laughs> These are the ones that, that's why you can't do Sharknado, right? Sharknado, no, we've no, established. No, It's too Even cynical. We, they it knows did what it's and we doing. did. This yeah. didn't know that they were making a bad movie, and it's howlingly bad. So, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it tonight, and I do think it contains moments that are just so jaw-droppingly, <laughs> gobsmackingly awful, where you just can't believe, you know, that someone was thinking that this was going to work. Uh, you have to check it out. I mean, this is like a must-watch. Sleepwalkers. I can't <laughs> believe I'm saying this. I'm never going to watch it again, probably. I mean, unless you can do it while drunk. With a group full of people, but then it's uh, a group full of people, a group of people. How about that? A clouder. <laughs> a Watch clouder. it with as many cats as you can find. Yes. Yeah, I think that would that would be the experience. So yeah, uh, yeah, you got to check out as an ironic, uh, you know, laugh a minute uh, experience. Sleepwalkers, Holly. What'd you think? Um, I was obviously I had not seen this movie. We said earlier. And I knew nothing about it. I saw a picture, the one that we posted on um, uh, for our mailbag announcement. And then I remember Michaela saying something about cat people. And that's all I knew about it. <laughs> and I instantly thought of when we watched the movie Cat People. Yeah. I was like, oh, no, because I didn't like cat people. <laughs> so that's I was like, oh, no, not again. I had no idea that I was going to be watching one of the most delightful, <laughs> ridiculous movies of the 90s. It was so funny it was i i what was i laughing within like the first five minutes i was like uncontrollably yeah it was, it was uncontrollable laughing i was, was laughing funny. i had to so look back hard. and make sure she was okay i was laughing so hard this movie legit legit made me laugh and it made me cry it did yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god it was so much fun this is the most ridiculous pile of shit I've seen it a long time and I loved every second of it. Even the parts that I hated. It was so wonderfully bad. <laughs> I don't normally condone uh, movies with incest. It's it's not it's, <laughs> One wouldn't. it's not usually my thing, even though I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. Um but looking past that, this movie was delightful. I loved every second of it. It was so funny. 
obviously I would not I, like Colin said I wouldn't watch this alone I wouldn't suggest you watch this alone but if you have a group of friends or a group of cats and you want to have a good laugh <laughs> this is the movie to watch absolutely it's, ca- it's a cat empowering movie it's a cat empowering movie can we it's just it's a cat catastrophe I, I'm just saying the- you are done okay yeah. No more comments from Colin. <laughs> I'm just saying, I had no idea how much I needed a movie where cats were the hero. That's just, I needed right? it. Mm-hmm. I needed it. And this movie delivered. So wonderful. I definitely recommend to check it out for a good laugh, for sure. Sleepwalkers, definitely. Michaela. Uh, to add on to what you were saying, if you are the kind of person that's watching this movie alone, that might read as like a cry to help for some people so yeah. just don't watch it alone like it's not something you should be watching right, by yourself I imagine you'd be like I want a relationship like that yeah you're yeah. you're taking some gross things out of context in this movie if you're watching it alone like you're you're watching like, it for the wrong reasons I feel like just imagine like walking in on someone watching this exactly they, that's what I'm saying that's fucked well, up that's what I'm saying because you're like what the fuck are they laughing so hard at or oh, yeah. no just because <laughs> any watching. you take any what is that any, longing look you're giving towards the screen right now <laughs> any frame of this movie out of context is going to read horribly oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's what it I'm worried about it reflects badly on you the, the viewer yes exactly yeah, so be exactly. careful beware yep. Um, so there are as many plot holes in this movie as there are cats. Like we've pointed it's out true. just a few, but I'm sure if we really thought about it, we could come <laughs> up with as m- yeah, yeah. M- many more. Um, but that being said, like it's got to be seen to be believed. Like this movie's just insane. Mm-hmm. Like I, we've really tried to describe some of the things that happen in this movie, and it probably sounds like we're exaggerating, but we are not. No, like that cat literally does punch the glass that out of the window. Oh, like, like, broke that, right through like, it. Like, <laughs> it's punched, on a mission. Yeah. He punched the fucking window. <laughs> like. <laughs> like they really are foldy, wrinkly, slimy, like <laughs> stiff rubber cat bodies. It's it. They look like sphinx cats covered in like goo. Like yeah. they're so yeah. gross. Basically. Probably Vaseline or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's icky. It's icky. <laughs> KY and jelly. <laughs> Why am I covered in goo? <laughs> Why am I drippings with goo? <laughs> <laughs> but this movie is just. It's. It's Amen. so funny. It's so much it. fun. It's just got to be seen to be believed. So I would. I would definitely recommend it just because it's. You're not going to ever see anything like it again. It was a moment in time that will never be replicated. So just w- take it in for what it is. Don't think too much about it. So I would definitely recommend it. Sean, what do you think? Uh, I think if... Uh, I'm, I'm going to use millennials as an example. And I think <laughs> if one of them saw this movie by himself, he would run to his group of friends and be like, Guys, have you seen Sleepwalkers? <laughs> oh my God. Because it's kind of uh, inexplicable this movie yeah. and i think that's kind of the great thing about it it's i mean like we said it's it's bad it's ridiculous it's it's things happen in this movie it's it's absolute craziness cats are the heroes weird shit happens cat people gooey cat people <laughs> Weird fucking characters. Like, it is, uh, it's ridiculous, but it's a good time. I, f- I recommend the hell out of it. I haven't seen this in years. I even liked any song in this movie. Mm-hmm. The best buddy cop duo we've seen in a while. That mm-hmm. fucking cat Clovis. and the deputy. Mm-hmm. Clovis and the deputy. <laughs> You're going to have a good time watching this movie. Mm-hmm. I guarantee it. Yeah. Get as many friends together and watch this as possible, because I think you'll all have a good time. Have like a Scream 4 barn party showing yeah. this movie. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. You're just yeah. going to enjoy the shit out yeah. of it. Just the re- utter ridiculousness of it. I recommend Sleepwalkers. For sure. Well, all right. There that's it is. four unanimous. You <laughs> unanimous. <must see. laughs> Sleepwalkers is unanimous. I can't believe, I feel guilty that we've done this. <laughs> I got to tell you. <laughs> I'm A. You know what? No. Hey, quality, we prepared them the best we could. We have prepared them. Yeah, we prepared them the yeah, best we could. Yeah, if you listen to this and you're just like, oh, they recommend it. Like, look, don't be alone and don't be sober. Yeah. Watch it. Yeah. And enjoy the fuck. Yeah. Enjoy it. Yep. All right. So that's Sleepwalkers. Uh, next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Holly! Holly, what are we watching next week? Next week, we're going back to 1990. Ooh. Dolph Lundgren, Brandon Lee. We're watching Showdown in Little Tokyo. Showdown in Little Sweet. Tokyo. Yes. I've never All seen right. this movie. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> First You're Brandon Lee movie me. on the podcast? Well, what, there's five of them. I think it is. Yeah, Dolph Lundgren, yeah. he's been on here before. Masters of yeah. the Universe. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. And I Come in Peace. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Okay. It's like old home weekend uh, for Dolph Lundgren on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until next week, we want to remind you that uh, we're turning all the lights off. Basement's going dark. <laughs>